Now I'm going to show you something interesting. The Bible says the earth was divided in the days of Peleg. Now, some people believe in the continental drift, which is possible, but it would only be in the Atlantic, not in the Pacific. But you notice this, here's uh, uh, Florida, and you see all this uh, here. This is all underwater, but at one time this was on dry land. And here's a connection here. And all along the uh, coast here, there are there is land underwater. Now here's Northern California, and you can see, uh, and we're at San Francisco here. Notice all this, where it drops down into the ocean. At one time, this was dry land. Notice the rivers here flowing down into the canyon. These were rivers at one time, which were above water. See, this bank is all along the coast of the United States. And there was, um, of course, there was uh, pressure from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge pushing on the continent, pushing this way. And that caused the mountain ranges to form all along here. These uh, coastal mountain ranges, which uh, trapped water inland here, behind these mountains, as the uh, flood receded. And of course, uh, this area here in California, and there's Bakersfield right in, let's see, right in, uh, there's Fresno. There's Bakersfield down here, which has a lot of uh, whale fossils trapped in this uh, inland sea. And of course this inland sea had some runoff here, off the continent right down here, running down here into the ocean basin. This was all dry land. Now they say that uh, the Bering Strait, where they crossed over here, down here, um, could be where, uh, yeah, right, right through here, is how the people crossed into America. But they could have crossed in here, because all this was dry land when the oceans, when the oceans were lower. Here's the uh, sea, here's Alaska, and here's the sea here. But you see the banks here, this is all dry land. And I'll zoom in on this here. You can see the runoff here, into the ocean at that time. This is dry land. Here's even part of a river here. Now some of this, of course, are landslides into the ocean uh, from water runoff from the continent as the flood was receding. You can see how Australia is connected to Papua New Guinea. All this was land. Also all the islands were connected. People could walk from one continent to another. And these were all connected to Asia. Here's uh, Cambodia, Vietnam. South America, connected to, just like in the Perry Rice map, to the South Pole, right in here. Through this land right in here. This is a close-up of it. South America, all the way over to the South Pole. These and these might have been islands, but then again, they might have been continuous land. And that's the way it's shown on the Perry Rice map. And the Bible says the Earth was divided in Peleg's day, which is almost 300 years after the flood, which is probably around 1980 BC, 
approximately. The flood occurred in 2347 BC to 48. Here is the Mid Atlantic Ridge, which is spreading apart, pushing uh, America and Africa apart. Now, these shapes here are very similar when you get to the continental level here, which was dry land. They're very similar, and the amount of material that was in this area was found on the continents, pushed up by the fountains of the deep from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, creating the sedimentary strata mixed with volcanic ash, which is called, sometimes it's mixed with sediment, we call bentonite. Now, it doesn't mean that these are necessary were pushed apart entirely, and the, uh, the continental drift theory actually it goes to exaggeration. But there is a similarity in the shapes of the two continents, but that could simply be because the, 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 they're conforming to the shape of this crack and they're being pushed apart. That doesn't mean that they were actually in contact with each other. And as they got pushed apart, of course, the California and the western uh, part of the United States would have been crumpled, creating the mountains. There's another view of the uh, Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And the shapes of these two show that they are similar because of the s crack that was pushed apart. But that doesn't mean that the continents moved all over the place and bumped into each other. That's an exaggeration. Now this shows uh, where the volcanics occur at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Here's another view of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. When the earth cracked up during the flood, releasing the subterranean waters at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge here, of course it sent fault lines all over the world. And this, of course, is the Ring of Fire. And you'll notice the greatest amount of volcanic activity is in this area because of the thrusting from this going in both directions, causing mountains to form along here, which are the coastal mountains. Notice where most of the volcanic activity occurs, and also over in here, and some over in here because of the thrusting this way. But most of the thrusting is right in here, and here and here. Here's some of those mountain ranges near um, near San Francisco, right along the coast. Now, along the coast here, in these areas, and also inland, are a lot of Miocene fossils. And on top of that are Pleistocene terrestrial fossils in a thin layer. Now, most of these are very uh, heavily filled with whale bones and fish and terrestrial leaves and also marine shellfish. Here's a kitty cat walking around in the uh, Siskiyou Mountains of Oregon, which were upthrust. And of course these upthrusts, these are uh, granite, basement granite, probably dated as uh, Mesozoic uh, dinosaur uh, age, supposedly from an evolutionary viewpoint. Along the California coast, the coast has been upraised. Now, out here is dry land where there once was the edge of the continent, but now it's here, and the water came in here and leveled this off in terraces as the water came into different levels. And these are dated at um, 50,000 years, they claim. Um, Miocene. Pleistocene, etc. This is Big Sur, California, uh, upraised area along the ocean. Very similar to uh, some of these fossil sites, uh, and I have a fossil trip, Palos Verdes, that looks very similar to this, which contains a lot of Miocene whales, uh, dated, uh, considered to be Miocene from an evolution viewpoint.
Now here you can see Nebraska, South Dakota, Montana, and Oklahoma, and Colorado, and Utah, and Nevada, Idaho, Oregon, California, Arizona, New Mexico. But notice this line right here. And notice the water that has flowed off of these this upraised area here. Now you can see this is the Mojave Desert out here. And here's California and uh, there is uh, Riverside and San Bernardino, Lake Elsinore, Ontario, San Bernardino here in Redlands. And here is a here is a Cajon Pass coming through here cutting through up to the desert and you can see how this this light colored material all in here is all Pleistocene, Holocene uh, strata, which is uh, very recent. Long after the flood, this was formed and deposited. And it flowed down through these different areas. And Gorgonia Mountain. Here's the 15 freeway coming down here to San Bernardino. And it cuts right through here and deposits this and fills this all this area with sand. Now in these areas is Los Angeles and Orange County, Disneyland here, Anaheim. And this whole area here, this whole area here is filled with Miocene strata along with um, Pleistocene on the surface, which are terrestrial animals. But these mountains here, these are Cretaceous with dinosaur bones in them and these are flood deposits. And you get some here where uh, you get some uh, some duckbill dinosaur bone fragments are found in here and also other places in California. But all this is post flood uh, strata containing fish, whales, and terrestrial leaves, and uh, delectopectin, which are deep water pectin, and also uh, containing lampfish and other types of fish which are deep water fish and uh, the delectopectins are deep water and also the leaves show that it's shallow water so this in here is a tsunami deposit which would be called a mega paleo tsunami deposit and uh, up in the areas up in here, uh, you find these Miocene fossils go all the way from uh, Alaska to Mexico. All along the coast, you can find whale bones in different uh, hardness of uh, sometimes in sand, sometimes in very hard rock, which is shale that has been uh, metamorphically melted and made very solid. These uh, mountains along the coast here. These uh, contain, um, in this area here, all along here is very large, uh, there are boulders, there's very, uh, lots of gravel, and this goes all the way up the coast. A gravel and sand and all unconsolidated. So this is would be considered Pleistocene, very recent within the last oh, uh, 40,000 years according to evolution. But this would be a post-flood deposit about the time of Peleg, which would be about uh, be about 2000 BC approximately, when there was a huge cataclysm that involved uh, massive numbers of meteorites which can, call which can cause tsunamis and also worldwide earthquakes. Now this uh, fault right through here split this area and caused part of this area to this area to move this way and this part to move this way in a fault and of course the San Andreas is near here and it goes right through here and there's also various, like the Elsinore Fault, and so there's several cracks in here. And of course it's covered over in these areas by uh, Miocene sediment, which is post-flood about the time of Peleg, about 2000 BC, approximately.
of course when the flood left the land uh, there was a lot of water up here in, a, in lakes and they burst the dam and created the Colorado River and came all the way down here uh, just right next to California down here into the Gulf of Mexico this is a remnant of it going all the way from Wyoming and, and they believe that there's underground rivers that still go all the way from Wyoming in underground caves this huge lake that we call the Mojave Desert is uh, blocked uh, in these barrier mountains here but they did find their way through here and through passes and cuts in Lake Elsinore or over here and the, um, probably um, a crest line and Lake Arrowhead and such and they worked their way through and left gravel and boulders all along here and as you go out from this it goes down into the valley of uh, Riverside and San Bernardino and they were leaving uh, it got finer and finer uh, down in here there are some areas where there's nothing but sand like in Sun Valley up uh, in LA area but you can see where the water came through here and deposited now there's no boulders in here they washed out here and also out through Lytle Creek and you find boulders all over the place here all the way from the oh, probably three some like three feet in diameter and as you go out it becomes finer and finer and but it is mostly sand and that's why these cities are very dusty because of the silt that was deposited as the water slowed down now where you see here uh, Riverside and the Green, uh, Green River Pass or the Santa Ana River comes through here into Yorba Linda and uh, out to Anaheim where all these fish are all over the place here with um, mammoths, mastodons, uh, saber-toothed tigers and so forth just like those trapped in the tar pits in LA except these are in uh, sand and gravel and sometimes in uh, shale and sometimes it involves a little bit of volcanic uh, material like even some sulfur now these mountains here are up thrust and they can contain uh, Cretaceous uh, yeah Cretaceous fossils which sometimes in here in about in this area here somewhere uh, there are ammonites and occasional dinosaur bones are found duckbill which by the way were uh, partly uh, aquatic animals these are deposited in water and marine shells but most of this material in here in these canyons and such that washed in is Miocene which is of course post flood those are two different uh, periods uh, different episodes during the cataclysms uh, during um, thousands of years ago Anaheim Hills is filled with diatomaceous earth which are microscopic animals it's solid microscopic animals by the trillions which is also found in Lompoc up north uh, about 50 miles away now this river comes out here this is the Santa Ana comes down here and it goes all the way down here to Costa Mesa where there are some bison and other animals are found in here and the fact is they called it uh, Bison Boulevard or something in here that's where they found Bison Antiguus which is like the ones found in the tar pits but you notice the river come down here and there's a lot, a lot of modern shells in here that have been left probably very early Holocene or very late Pleistocene but they are not fossilized they're just laying all over the place and here's Irvine and they, they find fossils there too around Ir Irvine marine and up here going up here to this area now you'll notice this is a deposit here probably a lot of material came down off of this this is Palos Verdes and I have uh, I filmed a field trip showing this area and there are a lot of whales in this area uh, in fact we found skulls and bones and various parts of whales 
Now there's Palace Verdes. And right up here is uh, Carson. Now they found a lot of terrestrial animals here like uh, bison antiquas and mammoth and mastodon and so forth. Because there's evidence that indicates they're both fossilized at the same time. Then you go on up here to LA uh, where the tar pits is and you got all these animals trapped in tar. But these same animals are found all over this area. Just not in massive quantities like it is at the asphalt seeps which are dated uh, up to 40,000 years, according to the evolutionary theory. And of course, as a creationist, we date that somewhere around 2000 BC, approximately. Um, I mean, uh, not 2000, BC, but um, 200, uh, two, uh, two, yeah, 2000 BC. Um, Back down here at uh, Palos Verdes, I uh, forgot to mention that uh, there was a uh, fossil site here where there were some uh, ancient Indian sites are in this area too. Um, and uh, I found some mouse skulls and other uh, terrestrial animals and including uh, the skull of a baby uh, mammoth. And you can see how the uh, Palos Verdes, and you see here's the edge of the continent, and you can see where the water ran off here down into the ocean basin. They used to think that, uh, that rivers could run under, under water in these forming these, at least that's what they used to think. But some, some doubt that explanation. Uh, in other words, hot and cold water, you know, could dig in, you know, be like an underwater river. Um, but that's unlikely. Notice here, here at Palos Verdes, and notice here the slumping in this area here. And then this river flowed down here. But it's been raced up here because of the water flowing from the Mojave Desert into this area taking gravel and rocks and of course um, gravel and rocks uh, are very poor at preserving fossils they are preserved best when they settle into shale in mud deposits and uh, sandstone uh, and get consolidated then they preserve things that are in them Now in this area in Palos Verdes, you can see right along the coast here where there are uh, flat, what they call um, river terraces or ocean terraces in this case. Now up in this area uh, in uh, Riverside, in this area here, here's uh, Palos Verdes, and here's Riverside, here's C Cajon Pass. Now in this area right in here, there are, there are river terraces. They are flat uh, par parts of land where people build houses. It's flat, and sometimes there's more than one of them, showing different levels of the water because the, the strata tends to level off at the top of that water because it's uh, eroding it off but not above the uh, in the atmosphere above the water uh, you don't get that erosion and over here down here in the other part of this valley of Riverside San Bernardino uh, Mary Ann was uh, studying at Loma Linda right here this is Loma Linda right in this area where the college is and the hospital and so forth they have proton therapy by the way very few places have that but um, now in this area there are a lot of mountains and you can see the uh, unconsolidated deposition here and it's not turned into rock it's uh, sand and gravel and, they, and it's stratified sometimes you see a lot of gravel in layers and they call them uh, terraces and some of these are oh I would say uh, three four hundred feet high uh, showing that the water completely filled this area 
this was a whole, it was a lake. Now here is Ritchie Canyon coming off of Washington and uh, Colton. By the way, Wy Wyatt Earp uh, lived in, near this area and his brother was a uh, Marshall, um, Virgil. Same ones that were in Dodge, or no, it was in uh, Tucson territory. And also they're buried here in uh, Riverside, uh, the family. They had a ranch in uh, San Bernardino. Just an aside. But anyway, here's Ritchie Canyon, which has a lot of faulting because there's a fault that goes right through here, part of the San Andreas. It's an offshoot from it. And you can see the material where it is cracked. And um, right in here, and, and there's a lot of rocks that have been split and cracked and stood upright. Uh, during the faulting and over here is uh, Grand Terrace right over here these houses are built on a river terrace and it's a very steep top of a plateau where these are built showing all this area down here is filled with water um, oh thousands of feet of water and you can see the deposition the unconsolidated deposition in these areas where these houses are built and they call it Grand Terrace too. Now San Bernardino, Ontario where the Ontario Airport is and Rancho Cucamonga. Now up here you can see where the water is run out here. A lot of this water flowing out of the Mojave Desert on the other side of these barrier mountains and all the gravel here. And over here from this is uh, Santa Clarita over tarts above LA. It also has massive amounts of marine fossils. I found many, many uh, articulated clams there. And many other places have articulated clams, which are also found in the post flood as well as during flood deposits. You find articulated clams around dinosaurs in Utah and the Morrison Formation. It's very common. Now those are freshwater, but these are marine. It seems like there was marine water inland and uh, ocean marine water, or mar uh, freshwater inland while it was uh, salt water in near the coastal areas, showing that the water had come together and mixed. Of course, I should mention that right over here Victorville and Apple Valley where Roy Rogers had his ranch and where he used to live and his museum used to be there not anymore now I've zoomed out a little bit here and up here is um, Barstow and the early man site and also there's fossils there. There's Miocene up in the hills that have washed down into the Pleistocene of the Lake Mannix area where they found a lot of artifacts. Now, archaeologists have uh, ridiculed the fact that these are artifacts, calling them geofacts, but that's a lie because the evidence proves that they are flaked by man. There's no other way of making them. But they don't want to admit that man was in America that early. I don't agree with uh, D. Simpson's dates, but I do agree with her in relatively, uh, from a creation viewpoint, I believe they were very early uh, people coming to America, um, and they were possibly Indians or natives. In other words, we don't know whether they were like the American Indians or not, probably um, older than that, probably back here's, here's Newberry Springs compared to here's Barstow. Newberry Springs is where they found a cave and this was a lake area at the time and Lake Mannix which was formed identical to what uh, 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 Louis Leakey found in Africa and we didn't they didn't find any uh, human bones here. I, I've actually worked at the uh, Calico site and knew D. Simpson and here's Yermo and Newberry Springs, there's a cave and they found some atlatls there and right near there are some slicks which were right next to the lake here. 
which was very recent, of course, that would be late Pleistocene, probably uh, up to about 2,000 years ago or 1,000, I mean 2,000 BC or 1,000 BC, somewhere in there. Of course, they would date it probably back 10,000 BC uh, because uh, evolutionists always stretch the dates. But uh, otherwise, they're relatively correct. Now, up here in the uh, Lake Mannix area, and you can see it's up here, and you can see where we are from L.A. Now, they found animals here, but the animals up here in Barstow, at the lake, uh, and also Barstow also has other animals here, which are Barstovian, which are the same animals as you find at the tar pits except I think they do find some oreodonts, which are not found in the tar pits. But they find in here at Lake Mannix here, uh, right up here, that this is an old, where they, there was a breach dam that washed into the area, just like in Africa, uh, at Old Vi Gorge, and uh, washed into the area and buried these animals here, including birds and other animals, and you can tell because it's volcanic ash right on top the next layer on top of it, just like it is in Africa. They just, uh, but they did find evidence of humans about that time at uh, early man site. Now, this area contains all of the animals right down to the microfossils of the same animals found in the tar pits in LA, right down to the microfossils. And, uh, and all the different types of animals, mastodon, mammoth, so forth, and they're found around the lake beds, and also at Barstow, there's a lake bed here too, and there are scattered bones here and there from these Pleistocene animals, which were deposited about the time of Peleg, about 300 years after the flood, when I discovered there was massive meteorite or asteroid actually impacts where these things broke up and hit many different places which so far hasn't been admitted by the scientific community. They are slow on many things. Now up, uh, up north of this, in the coastal areas, um, we had a uh, fossil trip there, and what I saw was articulated clams, uh, Balanus, otherwise known as uh, barnacles, large barnacles, about that big and this thick. And it was, um, <clears throat> they say this is an ocean deposit or a bay or something, but that's false because these are deposited in a tsunami deposit. And you can tell that because there was, uh, the barnacle was not attached to anything, but there was a giant clam articulated, so it was buried alive because the valves come apart and uh, there were leaves on the bottom of this barnacle terrestrial leaves so indicates that they were not in sight to that they were deposited by a tsunami deposit but this was a mega paleo tsunami which so far hasn't been acknowledged now they claim that there was a huge uh, tsunami that occurred up here in Washington, Oregon, and Northern California about the 1700s, and the uh, native Indians have legends about this uh, tsunami. And that is recorded, but there is extremely little scientific research into paleo mega tsunamis and of course the reason is is because it's a new subject and also because it goes against uh, Charles Lyell's theory of uniformitarianism which is the underlying foundation of Darwinism which uh, shows and these tsunamis show that these are catastrophic deposits and I believe that this in the Pleistocene is an unrecorded one that is shown by these fossils that are found along the coast all the way from Alaska to Mexico. Here are some of the fossils you find in Bakersfield when I was on a field trip there. 
This is a shark tooth found in the uh, silt, which is bentonite. It's uh, it was silt with in uh, bentonite, which is mixed sediment with volcanic ash, and also the. Um, There is a solid layer of volcanic ash above these fossils, showing there were volcanic eruptions at the time. Here's a, uh, I believe it's a Belain, Belain, <laughs> Belain wheel vertebra. And you can see that it's uh, rather worn. Here's another vertebrae. Some of these could be porpoise or different types of whale. this one and different parts of the whale of course now this is an ear bone from a whale and this is how they determine what type of whale it is I found these in two pieces and I discovered they went together and it um, fits and of course the chunk broke off there but this is an ear bone inside the uh, you know where there's a um, the different parts of the ear when the drum vibrates and it moves some of these bones now this one right here is one that I found there on in Palos Verdes and you can see the um, siliceous material had melted and formed on this Jeremy, and this appears this appears to be uh, a um, this is shale I was told but it's obviously not shale anymore that has been melted and inside you can see this is the way the whalebone are found I discovered this after I got home you can see the out part, outside part of the bone and then the inside, the marrow. It's a flat bone, so it's probably from the pelvis or skull or something like that. And then there's also pieces in here. But this is very, this is very, very hard rock. And that's why uh, they don't actually collect these, because they're really no value. Except, uh, you know, when they can find one that's loose, not... Um, set my poor little dinosaur up there. Now you can see that the uh, Anaheim Hills has uh, fish, Miocene fish with um, in diatomite and so does Lompoc up here near Bakersfield. Now Bakersfield is right over here and there are also a lot of fossils there of, um, and that's where I got these uh, whalebone on a dig there and they were, which I also videotaped and made a film out of and um, that's right in here. And the, this is sedimentary deposits. Uh, Miocene, Pleistocene. I think Miocene and Pleistocene are actually the same deposit. But here's where the diatomite is. But it goes all the way down from Lompoc all the way down to. Uh, over in here, over in here in Anaheim Hills, there's a lot of diatomite in the Anaheim Hills that are just as much as Lompoc. And by the way, that's where all the fish um, rock comes from that they use for building material, which often has complete fish in it. I found one house that had, in Orange County, that had on wagon wheel, I remember it was, which had uh, fish all through their uh, rocks on their house. And now this Anaheim Hills, uh, in this, in the Anaheim Hills, there's a lot of diatomite there, and then there's a lot of shale with uh, fish in it all the way, or, or in all these areas, including right around Disneyland, too. And it goes all the way up into, past through the Green River area, up into Riverside. Also contains the same fossils, including delectopectin and uh, other things. And right in the surface of this area, in the uh, cross from Prado Dam, I found the hand of a ground sloth. 
and it was uh, it was turned brown and it was completely covered with gypsum and there's a lot of gypsum in this area it looks like glass because gypsum is a marine evaporate from ocean water or highly mineralized water from the ocean this is the 215 right near Cajon Pass and you'll see this right here this is along the uh, to the uh, west or east east of the freeway and the these are this is a uh, terrace a river terrace all these houses are built on that a little closer look you can see the houses are built on this river terrace and here it is from above the freeway is right here this is a uh, um, east of the freeway now this is Grand Terrace from above you can see the freeway down here and this is all built on a terrace they used to use this for cattle back in the 1800s now this is Mount Vernon coming down from the Grand Terrace and uh, from above you couldn't see how it is a flat uh, flat area but you see all of this from here all of this city was covered with water now you can see Cajon Pass over here and this whole city up to here was covered with water we're up on the uh, the terrace this is soft stratified material coming down here is washing down because it's unconsolidated but there are rock layers showing uh, uh, levels of uh, which were surfaces at one time as this gravel and sand was deposited here you can see the end of this plateau where this is a ter river terrace here and all this area out there were covered with water up to the top of this plateau because water erodes it off in a level uh, as it erodes uh, to the level of the water so that means there was a tremendous amount of erosion to take out all of this area here which is now San Bernardino clear up to the uh, uh, San Bernardino mountains here you can see some of that uh, unconsolidated layered gravel uh, along Ritchie Canyon Ritchie Canyon is down here and this is along Ritchie Canyon Road and see the uh, terrace here see the erosion along the edge of the terrace Ritchie Canyon is right here and this is um, south of San Bernardino and Colton. Now look at these upthrust rocks in a layer here that have been projected up near this fault area in uh, Rechi Vista area. Now this is to the east of um, Rechi Canyon and it's uh, right the fault goes right through here. And this is a, uh, a side fault from the San Andreas. A closer view. And this is Olive Dell here. 